122 mm Korgun M1931-37 was a Soviet field gun developed in late 1930s by combining the barrel of the 122 mm gun M1931 and the carriage of the 152 mm howitzer gun M1937. The gun was in production from 1939 until 1946. It saw action in World War II and remained in service for a long time after the end of the war. Vehicle-mounted variants of the gun were fitted to the IS-2 and three tanks and ISU-122 self-propelled gun. Development history. In 1936 the Red Army adopted the 122mm gun M1931, also known as A-19. Unlike earlier ordnance pieces used by the Red Army, it had split trail carriage with suspension and consequently improved mobility and traverse. The carriage of M1931 had a number of shortcomings though. The elevation mechanism was slow and unreliable. Solid tired wheels hindered mobility to some extent. There were technological problems in carriage production. Soon after the M1931, the Red Army received another artillery piece in form of the 152mm Hudsi gun M1937, developed at the NO. 172 plant, under FF Petrov. This led to an upgrade of the M1931, handled also by Petrov's design bureau. The barrel of the M1931 was placed on the carriage of AML-20. The improved gun successfully underwent trials in September to October 1938 and on 29 April 1939 was adopted as 122mm Korgun M1931-37. Unusually, the new variant, like the old one, was referred to as A-19. Production history, the M1931-37 was manufactured by the Barricade plant in Stalingrad, no. 172 plant. The number of M1931-37s manufactured can be estimated at about 2,450, not including vehicle-mounted barrels. Description. Like barrel of late production M1931, the barrel of the M1931-37 was of loose liner construction and consisted of liner, jacket and screwed upon breech. The breech block was of interrupt screw type, similar in construction to that of the 152mm howitzer M1910-37. Recoil system consisted of hydraulic recoil buffer and hydro-pneumatic recuperator, both located inside the cradle under the barrel. The gun had split trail carriage adapted from the 152mm howitzer gun M1937. The carriage was fitted with leaf spring suspension and metal wheels with pneumatic tires. The carriage also featured equilibrator. The shield gave the crews some protection from small arms and shell fragments. The M1931-37 was transported as a single piece, with barrel pulled back. It was permitted to tow the gun with barrel in its normal position, but for short distances only and with speed of no more than 4 to 5 km per hour. Several types of artillery tractors were used, S2, S2, Comintern and, from 1943, Yar-12. Organization and employment, both variants M1931 and M1931-37 had the same place in army organizations, were often used alongside each other and combat reports rarely differentiate between them. Consequently, the data in this section is for M1931 and M1931-37 together, unless specified otherwise. Red Army the A-19 was originally intended for core artillery. 
together with ML20 it formed a so-called core duplex. In 1941 there were three types of core artillery regiments, with two battalions of ML20 and one of either A19 or 107mm guns. With two battalions of ML20 and two of either A19 or 107mm guns. With three battalions of ML20. Dot. Soon after the outbreak of the Great Patriotic War the Corps artillery was eliminated and was only reintroduced late in the war. Those new artillery regiments were issued 122mm guns along with other pieces, mainly 107mm guns and 152mm hutzes, in total 16 to 20 pieces per regiment. On the 1st of June 1944, RKK Corps artillery possessed 387 A-19s, and on the 1st of May 1945 to 289 A-19s. The gun was also used by artillery units of the reserve of the main command. In mid-1941 a cannon regiment of the RVGK had 48 A-19. In autumn 1941 these regiments were reorganized. A new, smaller, regiment had 18 A-19s. From 1942 cannon brigades were introduced, with 36 A-19s each. Such brigade could be a part of an artillery division, a huge formation, with up to four brigades of A-19 or ML-20. The first combat use of the A-19 was in the Battle of Karkangal. It also saw combat in the Winter War. On the 1st of March 1940 there were 130 A-19 guns at the front line. Three pieces were lost. By June 1941 the RKKA possessed, according to different sources, 1257 of 1300A-19s. The gun proceeded to be used throughout the Great Patriotic War. The A-19 was primarily used for indirect fire against enemy personnel, fortifications and key objects in the near rear. It was also equipped with armor-piercing shells for direct fire against armored targets. Although not an ideal anti-tank gun because of its large size, slow traverse and relatively slow rate of fire. In 1943 the A-19 was one of only a few Soviet guns effective against the new German tanks, such as the Tiger and Elephant. Testing with captured Tiger A USFBs in Kubinka demonstrated that the 122mm A-19 was capable of penetrating the Tiger A USFB's turret from 1000 to 1500 meters in the weld joint or edges of the front hull plates at ranges of 500 to 600 meters. An A-19 No. 501 was the first gun to open fire on 20 April 1945 at the Battle of Berlin. Other operators in the early stage of the Great Patriotic War hundreds of A-19s fell into the hands of Wehrmacht. Both variants were adopted M1931 as 12, 2 cm K390 over 1 and M1931, 37 as 12, 2 cm K, 390 halves. Germans used a total of 424 of these guns in field and coastal artillery and manufactured ammunition for them. The Finnish army captured 25 pieces in 1941 and also pressed them into service. The same designation 122K-31 was applied to both variants. Because of shortage in heavy tractors, the gun was mostly used in coastal artillery. Four pieces were lost, the rest remained in service after the war. In 1980s some pieces had the barrels replaced with 152mm barrels of ML-20. The resulting pieces were designated 152H 37-31.
In late 1980s both 152H37-31 and the remaining 122K31 received new 152mm L32 barrels manufactured by Vamos to become 152H88-31. The A-19s were used by Polish armed forces in the East in 1944-45 and remained in Polish service after the war. In 1952 to the Polish army possessed 63 pieces. In 1980s in order to improve their mobility, the Polish guns were fitted with wheels from KRA's Z255B truck, resulting in 122 millimeters armata W said 1931 37 85 78122 millimeters guns were supplied to Yugoslavia other recipients of the M1931-37 were Syria and Egypt. China also purchased a number of the M1931-37 during early stages of the Second Sino-Japanese War. Variants A19S slightly modified variant of A19 for use in ISU-122 self-propel gun. D-25 in 1943 a tank gun based on the A-19 was developed for the new Josef Stalin tank, in particular because the existing 85mm tank gun utilized in the early prototypes was deemed insufficient. The resulting prototype was the IS-122. There were, however, safety concerns as the muzzle brake on the gun exploded, nearly killing the attending Marshal Clement Vora. The fact caused some initial resistance to the adoption of the gun, but Stalin supported the decision to arm the tank named after him with a 122mm gun. The gun was redesigned to address the safety issue and the resulting weapon was named D-25, analogous to the earlier D-5T 85mm gun. D-25T, tank gun variant, in the last days of November 1943, Fyodor Petrov's artillery design team tried the D-25 122mm Korgan on a mounting used for the D-5T 85mm tank gun against a captured German Panther tank. Tests took place in the Cubink approving grounds, firing from a distance of 1,200 meters. The round pierced the front glassie, made its way through the engine block and penetrated the rear plate too. After the overwhelming success of this trial, necessary adaptations were made during the following weeks, and the model was accepted as the D25T on 31 December 1943. Production started immediately, to equip the IS-2 tank, D-25S variant for use in late production ISU-122 self-propel gun. The variant of ISU-122 armed with this gun was designated ISU-122S, 152H88-31A finish modernization involving the upgrading of the caliber to 152mm. 122mm Armata WZ. 1931-37-85 say Polish modernization. Dot. Ammunition. The gun fired separate loading case charge ammunition with one of four possible propellant charges. The full no. 1, no, 2 and no, 3. In addition to 122mm gun shells, the A-19 could fire 122mm howitzer shells. However because of lesser durability of those shells they could not be used with full charge. Surviving pieces. 
The M1931-37 can be seen, among other places, in the Central Armed Forces Museum, Moscow, Russia, in the Museum of Artillery and Engineering Forces, St. Petersburg, Russia, in Museum of Heroic Defense and Liberation of Sevastopol on Sapun Mountain, Sevastopol, Ukraine in the Poznan Citadel, Poland, in the U.S. Army Ordnance Museum in Aberdeen, Maryland, United States, in the Fort Sill Artillery Museum grounds in Lawton, Oklahoma, in the Military Museum, D.E.J., Romania, 